Turns with me to the book of Zechariah in chapter number 3. The book of Zechariah tonight in chapter number 3. Uh, the next to the last book of your Old Testament. Get to the end of the Old Testament and flip back one book from Malachi to Zechariah. And chapter number 3 tonight is where we'll draw our text. I was reading through here some time ago and read over these passages many times, but this jumped out at me uh, like it hadn't ever before and kind of reached out and grabbed me. Uh, and I uh, hope the Lord will speak to your heart with it tonight. Zechariah chapter 3, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. If you found your place, say amen. amen. The Bible said, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. I want you to notice the last part of the verse. This is what jumped off the page at me. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. I'm interested in the last part of verse number one, although we'll preach through these four verses and try and highlight some truth out of all four. I'm interested in the last part, though, of verse number one, where it said that Satan was standing at the right hand of the high priest, whose name was Joshua at that time. Satan was standing at his right hand to resist him. And tonight I would like to preach on this thought to your heart. I'm preaching on when Satan resists you. When Satan resists you. Now, you say, preacher, I'm not familiar much with Zechariah the prophet or with the man Zechariah is writing about, Joshua. Uh, the Bible says he's Joshua, the son of Josedek, and he's the high priest. Well, you'll find out more information about both of these men if you read the books of Nehemiah and Ezra. When you read the books of Nehemiah and Ezra and those wall-building times and those temple-building times over there, you'll find and Zechariah is the prophet for God's people and Joshua is one of the Levites and he is the high priest at that time. Now let me just say this, something that I never thought about until this morning when I was ruminating and just pondering once again over my message. The, the theme verse for our Bring the Book Youth Camp Meeting comes out of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1. It is when Nehemiah, Ezra, Zechariah, and Joshua the high priest, they bring Bring the book of the Lord to the people and God speaks to them. Those are the characters in the story I'm preaching about tonight. And what hit me it just real quickly was this. Anytime you start trying to bring the book and give it to somebody else, Satan will start resisting you. And let me just say this at the onset of the message to those who were a part or even if you weren't a part of the meeting just because you're a part of Bible Missionary Baptist Church. If you think that the devil is going to let go and just going to say, well, you know, no big deal. Five people got saved, two more on Sunday, four more out there in Virginia, another one over there in Kentucky, God moving around all these young people in all these churches. If you think the devil is just going to say, oh, no, just leave Bible missionary alone, no big deal, you, you are sorely mistaken this evening. Uh, if, if the devil messed with these people for bringing the book and resisted them, mark this down, he's going to try and get in your home, he's going to try and get in our church, and he will bring resistance tonight. Now there's several things I'd like to just point out real quickly by way of introduction. I, I may have a long introduction and a shorter message tonight, but it'll all be for our admonition and for our help this evening. Let me show you the first thing about resistance and when Satan resists us, we find the first thing is resistance is absolute. Resistance is absolute. Say, so what do you mean by that? I mean there will be resistance in every child of God's life. If you're looking for a Christian life with no resistance, that's not a Christian life at all. 
If you think you're going to live for God and get away with it and the devil is not going to actively try and press you and push you and keep you from walking with God, then you are sorely mistaken tonight. There's not a Christian like that in the Bible. As a matter of fact, the very nature of his name. Do you know what the name Satan means? It means an adversary. That's what the name means. Satan means adversary. And then here in the text it said Satan stood at his right hand to resist him. I looked up the word resist tonight, Brother Travis. And the word resist literally means to be an adversary. So this is what hit me, Brother Randy. The adversary was being adversarial towards Joshua. In other words, he's doing what he is. If you think the devil ain't going to do what the devil does, then you're crazy tonight. His very nature is he is an adversary and he is going to resist your life. He resisted Job. We read in chapter 1 and 2 of Job where Satan came before the Lord and he wanted to get at Job. We read where he resisted David in 1 Chronicles by provoking him to number the people. We read where he resisted Jesus in his earthly ministry on the Mount of Temptation. We read where he resisted Paul. Paul said this. Paul said, I would have come to you once and again, but Satan hindered us. He was resisting us. We find that Satan resisted the churches in the Revelation. In Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, it constantly talks about that Satan's seat was where some of those churches were and that the depths of Satan was against them. Now look, y'all, if he resisted Job and he resisted David and he resisted Jesus and he resisted Paul and he resisted the churches in the Revelation, you and I are not going to be exempt from this thing tonight. Settle it in your mind and settle it in your heart that there will be resistance. Have has anybody ever found it odd or strange that there are certain activities of life that the devil never resists you in? Have you found it odd or strange that when it is late time, the devil doesn't start resisting you? I ain't never had a family blow up when I've been going to the mountains, the lake, the beach, the river, something like that. Everybody's hunky-dory. Everybody's on time. Let's get in the car. Let's load up. Let's go. Everything's great. I ain't never had no resistance when I said, youngins, there's a new cartoon at the movies. Let's go watch a cartoon, then go get ice cream. I never had no resistance. I'll tell you when my biggest resistance comes. It ain't when I've been, I ain't never had resistance going to watch a Georgia Bulldog football game. I mean, brother, we jumped in the car, roll down there, everything's wonderful. I'll tell you where the biggest resistance comes for me. It's Sunday morning. It's Thursday night. It's when we're going to do something spiritual. Have you ever noticed that? Does it ever cross your mind that when we are doing carnal things, it seems like there is very little resistance. But as soon as we're going to do something spiritual, that's when we get headaches, back aches, belly aches, stomach aches, toe aches. That's when you and your wife start fighting. That's when the children start start being rebellious. That's when the car breaks down. That's when the hot water heater blows up. That's when all hell breaks loose. Why? Because the devil knows there ain't nothing spiritual happening at the ball field. There ain't nothing spiritual happening at the movie house. There ain't nothing spiritual happening at the mountains or the beach. But God's going to do something in your life as soon as you walk through those doors and Satan says, no sir, we're going to resist that as hard as we can. And the Bible says this, but what amazes me is so many of God's people are ignorant to what I'm preaching to you. It's like this escapes them, Brother Hunter. The Bible said, we are not ignorant of Satan and his devices. We're not supposed to be ignorant of these things. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about seeking and we may devour. You should know these things. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Y'all go ahead and make it in your mind and understand when you start doing anything. Isn't it amazing? I ain't never, (laughs) Brother Danny, I've never felt resistance to look at Facebook. Never. Anytime, Brother John, I've ever picked up Facebook to scroll through it, I've never felt some resistance. Like phone calls coming through, texts coming through. Something else I got to do. No, 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 no. You can sit on Facebook and just scroll for an hour. No resistance. You ever found that? You ever find it weird? You can sit down and watch a movie. No resistance. 
Watch a TV show for three hours. No resistance. Sit down and open that book in your lap. And see, if all, and see if all of a sudden 35 different things that you forgot about and you need to do right now don't enter your mind. People you should have called, people you ain't texted, something you need to look at. Phone starts dinging, kids go crazy, knock at the door. What, what is that? Are you, surely I'm preaching to a crowd that's smart enough to see. That is satanic resistance. Oh, preacher, that's not the devil. Are you kidding? Are you crazy? Of course it is. He wants to resist your spiritual life in any way that he can. I can't tell you how many different people that I've seen either get saved or God do something in their life. And, and, and they come talk to me afterwards and they'd say, preacher, I fought hell by the half acre just to get to church today. I mean, I was this close not to coming, but I sure am glad I did. And I was fought the whole way, but once I got there, God did something in my life. I'm saying resistance is absolute. Your adversary is going to resist you. Not only do I see resistance as absolute, but listen to this. Resistance can add. Resistance can be something that adds to your life. Do you know what God uses? You say, preacher, how can the devil resisting me be good for me? How can it add anything positive to my life? God uses resistance in your life to strengthen you. Your Bible said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Do you know how they build strength? I mean, literally how people build strength, whether it's at Planet Fitness, Gold's Gym, the YMCA, ever what they're going to do. You know, how you, build, you know how you build strength? You build it through resistance. That's how you build strength. So what do you mean by that? You lay, down, you lay down on that bench press rack and you put that weight on you. What is that right there? When it comes down, you're pushing. That's resistance against you. But what is the resistance doing? The resistance is uncomfortable. The resistance is not fun. But what does it do? It yields addition into your life. I watch those people who are going to be speed runners and, and athletes in football and things of that nature. And a lot of times when they run, they'll put these little parachutes on their back. And, and they'll take off running. And, and as soon as they do, these little parachutes about like two by two or three by three in diameter. But as soon as they run up to a certain speed, that parachute deploys behind them. And it's resisting them as they're running. What's the point of that? It is conditioning them and adding something to them so that when it is time to drop the hammer in the race, they are able to run much more effectively because of the resistance that the coach has put on them prior to the race. And we are living in a day that we have such weak, anemic Christians because they do not want any resistance in their life. No resistance for me, God. As soon as it starts getting a little bit tough, as soon as it starts getting a little bit hard, that's not what I'm looking for. I don't want no resistance. Do you know what? Me and my son was just watching, uh, Brother Hunter, a documentary the other day about, about fighters. Uh, there was a documentary about that, um, that Conor McGregor guy, that fighter. And, and we was watching some of that. And, and you know what I found out? And I've, I've seen this before, but it just kind of refreshed my memory. Do you know what I found out, Brother Doug? The way that they train these fighters? You train fighters... By fighting. You get them ready for the fight by putting them in the cage with somebody and resisting them daily. I mean, every day it showed before the big fight, they got this boy in there with somebody almost twice his size, and they're wrestling, and they're grappling, and they're smacking each other around. They're sweaty. And I mean, he has just been in a full deadlock of resistance, Brother Joe. And, but what did that do when it finally got time to fight? Brother, he says, I'm ready because I've endured some resistance. I've gone through some resistance. You know why God allows resistance from the devil? He ain't going to stop it. You know why God allows resistance in your life you say God this ain't producing nothing this ain't doing nothing that ain't true it's working you out it's building you up and, and every and every time you choose to come to church instead of lay out because of resistance God does something in your life and every time you read that Bible when you feel like doing something else and there's resistance on it God doing something in your life and every time you get down and pray instead of listening to all the things of the world uh, and quitting pray God's doing something in your life and every time you tell somebody about Jesus 
when everything in you says you're going to look stupid and you're going to look crazy, but you do it anyways, God's doing something in your life. God uses a, a resistance for addition tonight. Resistance, Satan resisting you. So we see not only resistance is absolute, resistance brings addition. Paul even said this. You say, preacher, I don't believe nothing. I don't believe resistance can add nothing to my life. Oh, what about Paul? You know what Paul said over in 2 Corinthians and chapter number 12? Paul said over there, he said that there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Listen, listen, talk about Satan resisting. He said it was given to me a thorn in the flesh, brother Chad. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, resisting me. And he said, I prayed three times to the Lord. Lord, let it depart from me. Oh, God, take this resistance from my life. You know what God said? God said, I ain't going to do it, Paul. He said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory. This is what he said in 2 Corinthians 12. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul said, God is putting power in my life through the resistance that I am going through. We are living in a day of Christianity where no one wants any. We want this happy-go-lucky, always on the mountaintop, everything, everything. I mean, hunky-dory, no problems. That's not a profitable Christian life. A Christian life that produces strength is one that the devil constantly resists. Mark this down. Mark this down, please. If the devil never resists your life, you are of no threat to him. <laughs> so how do I recognize resistance? You can recognize it in all sorts of ways. It doesn't just come because somebody came by your house, threatened to burn your house down because you're a Christian. Resistance comes in all forms. It can come, but you have to be wise enough to recognize it. Notice, that's the devil doing that. This don't normally happen. This is out of the ordinary. What is this? Why is this happening? It is Satan resisting my life. Resistance is absolute. Resistance can add. Let me say this, and I'll, I'll get into the message. Resistance announces. Resistance can announce some things. Well, you say, what do you mean it can announce? Resistance announces what you really are or how strong you really are as a Christian. Brother Hunter, I like it. Navy SEAL stuff. Brother Cop, I like it. Navy SEAL stuff. That special forces stuff like all y'all hooked up in. I like it stuff. And I've watched so much stuff and read so many books on the Navy SEALs and special forces and all this stuff. Had God not called me in the ministry it, it, way back when, I, that, I, I would have... I, that stuff just absolutely thrills me. I mean, I just think, man, I don't think I was big enough, bad enough, or tough enough to be one of them, but I'd like to win into that somewhere over there and just do something around. Just, those, that's amazing stuff to me. It's cool. But I read about this, Brother Archie. I read about, I'm talking about it announces something. Those Navy SEALs, when they get those guys there, they, they all think they are just the baddest dudes on the block. And then they get them there, and you know what they start doing to them? They start resisting them. I mean, and they resist them. Brother, they, they give them very minimal sleep and very minimal food. And they, they throw them out in the surf in San Diego in the cold water and make them stay there for hours and then run them up on the beach at night and make them roll in the dirt and then make them pick up big telephone poles, several of them, and run across the beach in that deep sand. Then they put boats over their heads. and make. I mean, and it's just torture is basically all it is. Now listen to me. And all the time they're doing that for a whole week, putting them through absolute mental, physical hell, resisting them. This is what they're telling them the whole time. The whole time this is what they're telling them. Anytime you get ready, all you got to do is walk right over there to that door and there's a bell, a big golden bell. And they give you a helmet with a number. Everybody gets a helmet with a number. So all you got to do anytime you get ready, they'll come to them while they're suffering, while they're freezing, literally sitting there in their bodies in shock, freezing, resisting them. And they'll come up to them and say, 
You want, you want, you want a, cold, a warm bed? You want a hot shower? You want a meal? You want a warm cup of coffee? And brother, they're sitting there and their body's aching. That's, that's all they want right now. Say, all you got to do is go ring that bell. Just go ring the bell. They're begging them to do it. Do it. Go on. Please do it. Go ring the bell. You watch them videos, everyone, and, and it happens. Like, I mean, most of the SEAL classes don't graduate. Very small percentage of SEAL classes that come in graduate. Most of them wash out. And you'll watch those fellas. They finally reach a breaking point, Brother Bill, where they can't stand it no more. And they get up, and they start walking over to that bell. And while they're walking over, a lot of times their own buddies in the crowd are hollering, Don't go! Stay with us! Come back! Don't go! I mean, they're literally cheering. And the drill instructors the whole time are saying, No, go! Go get your hot meal! You're cold! You're freezing! Go get it! And they'll walk over there, and they announce to everyone, Bing! 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 They ring that bell and set their helmet down. They walk off, and when they do, the drill instructors start pointing at them, and they holler, There goes a quitter! There goes a quitter! That's a quitter! Y'all want to know what a quitter looks like? There he goes! Look, that's a quitter! Oh, that's just, that's hateful. <laughs> what, you want somebody that can't go through that fighting Al-Qaeda? I, I don't. I want. I want. If I'm gonna put somebody over there fighting and killing Bin Laden, I want somebody that's been through all that. Yeah. Red meat eating, tough raw hide suckers. What I want. Hey, Amen. That's right. Make me feel good. No, I got somebody with a gun like that standing on the wall protecting me. Yeah. There goes the quitter. You know what I've seen so many times in my Christian life? I've seen so many of God's people that, brother, they get in the crucible of affliction. Brother, they get in that resistance, and the devil is resisting them, and God allows it. And you know what the devil comes by saying the whole time? He says, just quit. Just quit. Just wash out. Hey, 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 hey. It'd be a whole lot easier if you just get out of church. You wouldn't have as much problems. You wouldn't have as much heartache. Just quit right now. Just go on. Start working on Sundays. Start working on Thursdays. Just quit church. Quit serving God. Get out to choir. Get out your Sunday school class. Get out from serving the Lord. Stop reading. You never had this much trouble till you yoked up with them crazies down there at BNBC. Just get out. And brother, I've watched so many Christians through my years of serving God in evangelism and in the home church and even here just finally walk up and they can't take it no more and they bang, bang, bang. Bing, bing, bing. I quit. Can't take it no more. Can I say this? I don't want to announce to this generation. I don't want to announce to God's people that I finally threw up my hands and quit, that the resistance got too much. I don't want to announce to the people of God that it just got too bad, that God's grace was not enough, that God's word was not enough, that God's spirit was not enough, that I finally took my family out of church. I don't want my children to look at my life and say, Daddy used to preach. Daddy used to stand on a pew and tell people about Jesus. Daddy used to tell folk about God, but now he's just washed up. Not I don't want that to be my record. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's always fun, but I am saying it's worth it to be among the people of God and to continue to fight the good fight of faith. I'm talking about Satan resists us tonight, but it's profitable Say a resistance is absolute. Resistance can add. Resistance announces. Anyone can run a race when there's no resistance. Can I tell y'all something about the Christian race? It's not a fair race. <laughs> I'm, it's not fair. It is not. Do you know how normal races are run? Normal races are run that you've got, you've got lines in your lane. And if that person gets in your lane and trips you up, they disqualify them. No, no, there has never been a race. Boston Marathon, New York Marathon, you know, uh, Olympic Games. There has been a race where while, while the people are running by, while the people are running by, that the crowd starts saying, hey! Yeah. I'll pick that up later. <laughs> and there has been a race where they start throwing stuff out of the crowd. They don't do that. But that's what the devil does. You're in a race that it ain't totally fair. I done emptied all the tissue, so I'm going to throw it again. 
You're in a race that you'll come by, and the devil will take the temptation you like the best. And while you're coming, he'll throw it right out in front of you. Try and get you all messed up. The devil will come run beside you and say, He'll come run behind you and grab you and try and pull you back. It ain't fair. And if you run your Christian life thinking, well, God, this ain't fair, you ain't going to run. Just go and accept the fact this race is going to be a race of resistance. It's not fair. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You know what the Bible said? I got to give you my last three little points. We're going to be done. But you know what the Bible said? It said this. Not only, not only does the devil resist us, Brother Jack, he's an adversary to us, but we're called to do it right back to him. That's right. <laughs> Brother Dwayne, my Bible said, submit yourselves therefore to God. And after you submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We, we ain't just on a defensive, we on an offensive too. He may resist me, but I'm called to resist him. I'm called to charge the gates of hell. The gates of hell won't prevail against the church. I'm called to pray and walk with God and do the greatest damage I can to his his kingdom tonight. Amen. So, with all of that said, for those who are trying their dead level best to resist the devil, for those who are trying their dead level best to keep resisting and let God adding something to them, for those doing their best, I want to show you a couple things about resistance and we're done. We'll give you about 10 minutes and we're out of here. Number one, let me say this, when Satan resists you, firstly, you don't have to be afraid. <laughs> when Satan resists you, you don't have to be afraid. I'm not saying it doesn't send fear when Satan resists us, Brother Cliff, but we don't have to be afraid. You say, why is that? <laughs> I love this. Why don't we have to be afraid, preacher? Because the same one that was with Joshua is the same one that's with me. Look who's with him when the devil resists him. He don't stand alone. Verse 1, he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before. Look who he's standing in front of. The angel of the Lord. Now, unless you don't know this, that's Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. You say, I don't believe that. I can show you a half dozen scriptures or more where the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament is a pre-incarnate appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, when the angel of the Lord speaks, it always refers to him like it's the capital L-O-R-D speaking himself. It ain't just a normal angel. When the angel of the Lord shows up, it's Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, Paul said this in Acts 27. When Paul was on that boat sailing and they got in that storm, this is what Paul said. He said there stood by me this night, the angel of God, listen what he said about the angel of God, the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. He said the angel of God, I belong to him and I serve him. Paul, are, Paul already told us not to worship angels, but he said the angel of God, I serve him and I belong to him. That's Jesus Christ. Paul said in the book of Galatians, Paul said in Galatians that when I came to you, you received me as an angel of God, even as Jesus Christ. That the angel of God is Jesus Christ. So in other words, what Joshua is standing before here he's got Satan on his right hand and Satan's leaning over and he keeps messing with him and he keeps poking him and he keeps pushing him and he keeps accusing him but while he's standing there he don't gotta be afraid cause somebody is in front of him somebody is with him somebody is for him and tonight you may be poked by the devil you may be prodded by the devil you may be resisted by the devil but you don't have to be afraid there is somebody on our side there is somebody for us tonight and the devil can't do anything to me that he does not allow this evening. Brother Kevin Stewart, come here. Come here. Don't, don't move in lineman gear. Move in, move in fast gear. Praise God. Come here, Cody. Stand right over there, Brother Kevin. You come stand right here. Stand. I know it's a mess up here. Y'all didn't see that back here, but it's a mess up here. Here, this is what we got. We got Joshua the high priest standing here. And he's standing before the angel of the Lord. And on Joshua's right hand is the old devil. 
Don't say amen right there, Michael. <laughs> Standing next to Joshua's angel of the Lord. And here what we're going to find is the devil keeps accusing Joshua. You got them dirty garments on. Got them filthy garments on. You claim to be a priest. You claim to be working for God. Look how dirty you are. I see what you really are. Them people you worship with, they don't know you. I know you. And you dirty and you rotten and you filthy. But you know why Joshua ain't scared? Because somebody bigger than him. Now hold on, don't hurt me. Hold on, don't hurt me. This ain't pre-planned. This ain't pre-planned, so I don't know what he's finna do. Got a door behind me. I'm finna hit it. And I want y'all to realize something. I can, cause he belongs to him. <laughs> you know what this means? I may get up close to him. I may whisper in his ear. I may poke him, push him, prod him, and accuse him. But I can't do nothing to him that he ain't watching. <laughs> and I can't do nothing to him that any good time he gets ready, he can step right in and say, that's enough. That's enough. He's had enough. You've done enough. And you can't do nothing else. And tonight you got a big elder brother whose name is Jesus Christ. You got somebody on your side and the devil may probe and the devil may resist and the devil may prod. But anytime he gets ready, he can step in and say, that's enough. Back yourself up. That's my child. Thank you, my brother. You got somebody on your side that ain't never lost a fight. He ain't never been defeated. He ain't never been whooped. And anytime he wants to, he can say, that's quite enough of all that. We see not only when Satan resists you, you don't have to be afraid. There's another thing I saw out of this text, verse 2. When Satan resists you, you don't have to answer. Amen. Mm. You don't have to answer. Let me just pause right here and say this. Please. And I don't know that anybody in here does this. I don't know. But if you do, please stop talking to the devil. You say, but he's talking to me. And he wants you to start talking back. Because as soon as you start talking back, he's going to get you all messed up. Please stop using your own wit and your own wisdom to try, to try and outsmart the devil. You won't do it. He'll get your mind scrambled like an egg. Say, so what do I do? You don't use your answer. You don't use your words. Look at what happened. Verse 2. Watch it. Satan standing in his right hand and resisting. Verse 2. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Once again, talking about the angel of the Lord. That's who's speaking. And look what the Bible just called him. The Bible just called the angel of the Lord the capital L-O-R-D. That's God. And the Lord said unto Satan, this is what the angel of the Lord said about the Father. It's one member of the Godhead speaking about the other member. The Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Here we find in the text, Joshua does not use his own words to resist or answer Satan. He uses and lets the Lord's words do the job. I do not have it in my vocabulary, Brother Skip, or in my ability to understand, to reason with a being that the Bible says is wiser than Daniel. Y'all, do you know how smart this cat is? Wiser than Daniel? You know about Daniel? Y'all read your Bibles? I know you do. And, and, and you know what Daniel's about. The Bible said Daniel was so wise that he was wiser than all the astrologers, the soothsayers, and the magicians in Babylon. The Bible said he was so stinking wise that when the king had a dream and couldn't even remember the cotton-picking dream, Daniel come up with the dream and give him the interpretation. Daniel is so wise that one day a finger 
pokes out of the glory world and writes, many, many tickle you farce it on the wall. That's what it said. Many, many tickle you farce it. Anybody want to try and give a, you know, I know we read the Bible, so now we know what it says. But just suppose if we didn't have the Bible and a finger all of a sudden popped out tonight and wrote, many, many tickle you farce it on the wall. Anybody got an interpretation for that? I mean, my only interpretation for that is, praise God. So I, I, either I got, I've been smoking some dope or I ate too much pizza before I went to bed last night. It's the only interpretation I got for something like that. Daniel pops right on into place and he says, uh, yeah, that right there means uh, you've been waiting the balances, you've been found wanting, and God's going to give your kingdom to somebody else tonight. Now, the Bible says he's wiser than Daniel. And if you think you're going to be able to match wits with a being like that, who's had 6,000 years to mess with mankind, you got no shot. She say, preacher, though, the devil, I know it's the devil. He's messing with my mind. I know it's the devil. He's messing with my family. I know it's the devil. He's messing with my home. I know it's the devil. He's hindering me. I know it's him. I got to say something. If you do, don't use your words. Our Savior, when he came as a man, showed us as men how to combat Satan. When he spoke with Satan, he never used his own word. Well, it was his own word, but he didn't just try and put it in his own word. You know what he said every time he answered the devil? Brother Parks, every time he answered the devil, Brother Rodney, this is what he said. It is written. It is written. It is written. Matthew 4, Luke chapter 4. When he was out there in the wilderness being tempted, every time he said it's written, mention I'll live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, doth man live. He said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Him only shalt thou serve. It is written. I mean, over and over, he just quoting the book to him. And when the devil resists you, you have a weapon. What do you have? One offensive weapon. I like, I like what somebody said when Sam Colt, when Samuel Colt made the first revolver, made that bad to the bone, 45 long Colt revolver, changed everything out in the West. It went from old flint locks and cap locks, and you could only get one shot off, and then you'd have to, you know, put a, put a ball in a patch and you, and you powder down the barrel and then ram it down and then put a cap on it and cock it back and shoot it. And then you'd have to go through the whole process again. But old Sam Colt come up with something new. Old Sam Colt come up with a revolver that had six shots in it. And all you had to do was cock, pow, cock, pow, cock, pow, cock, pow, six times. Son, of them engines didn't know what hit them. I mean, all of a sudden, six of them jump one guy, and he goes, pow, 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 pow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and you know, this is what they said, Brother Wayne. This is what they said. I love this statement. They said this. They said, <laughs> somebody made this statement. They said, God made man, but Sam Colt made man equal. <laughs> In other words, Sam Colt made it where a little man could defend himself against a big man. Like me and Brother Kevin. <laughs> You know, I ain't want to take somebody like that on. But you let me have my Taurus 745 Pro loaded down with 745 ACP rounds. I feel a lot more bigger than what I really am. It make a little five foot eight fella feel like a big six foot four fella, praise God. <laughs> Here. There's all time crazy stuff happening around the church. I don't know why people think the church is the place to come and act stupid. <laughs> we come out of prayer meeting the other night and there's a suburban sitting out there loaded down with about eight teenagers in it and they was all lighting up fixing to smoke dope I walked up on the door and I said what y'all doing in the parking lot me and brother Jack walked up there and they all got scared and they said oh we was looking for an address no you wasn't you was fixing to fornicate with one little girl in there and you was all lighting up fixing to smoke dope they fixed real fast just run out of the parking lot later on that night at midnight I'm a dead to the world asleep Miss Amanda brings my girl Abigail home it's midnight don't ask me what they was doing out at midnight. I'm trusting her that she's a good youth leader and she wasn't doing nothing nefarious. <laughs> Brother Mark, my, phone, my, my wife's phone rung, and, and she wakes me up and says, Arr! There's a bunch of young hoodlums out there in the parking lot, and your daughter's scared, like parked right next to my driveway. And they're all out like they're having a block party at midnight, right outside the cars in my driveway. I said, what'd you do? I jumped up, grabbed my flashlight, and my 45. That pair of ordnance 45. Now that one's got 13 plus one. You can take down a lot of big fellas with that one. Brother Danny, they, they, they a lot more of them they are as orange. But son, it, hey, I got, I got my piece. 
Hold that. I come walking out there and took my flashlight and started flicking it on and off at him, had my pistol down by my side, and I mean, I'm all like bow chested. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. Come on. Come on, bro. <laughs> what y'all doing? <laughs> what y'all doing? Oh, we lost the cell phone. We can't blah, 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 blah. I said, well, y'all need to go hunt your cell phone somewhere else. I said, what gave you that kind of boldness? I, I had a defense in my hand. And y'all, when Satan comes by and he starts whispering in your ear and he starts resisting you, if you ain't got nothing in your hand and if his words you ain't hit in your heart that you might not sin against God, then you got reason to be scared. But I'm telling you what will make you feel bigger than what you really are when the devil comes by. If all of a sudden you can go swing and you can pull out that black bag 66 caliber brother you pull that thing out right there the devil says I better hunt some yonder I better ease up I better back off he's got the only thing I'm scared of it's the only thing you got the devil starts messing with your mind you know what you say you say that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. The devil starts scaring you to death in the midnight hour and you say, what time? I'm afraid. I will trust in thee. The devil starts coming up next to you and the devil starts telling you God's a liar and God's done broke his promise to your life. You say, God's not slack concerning his promise as some men count slightness, but it's long suffering to us or not willing that any should perish, but that all should. You take him to the book tonight. Amen. When Satan resists you, you don't have to be afraid. When Satan resists you, you don't have to answer. And lastly, I'll tell you this. When Satan resists you, you don't have to be ashamed. <laughs> you don't have to be ashamed. I believe the true context of what we're looking at, Brother James, tonight is that Satan is resisting Joshua. And the way he's resisting him, I believe, from the context is he's trying to say you're unworthy. You're dirty. You're unclean. And you should be ashamed of yourself. I think that's the context because of what's coming. Watch what your Bible said, verse 3. You don't have to be ashamed. I'm done. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Watch it. And he answered, speaking of the angel of the Lord, and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. It's all in the past. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. He says, I know the devil's been saying you nasty and you dirty and you ain't worthy to stand before God and do anything in the temple. And you realize you're a priest of God too. If you say the Bible calls you a priest and you work for the Lord and you serve the Lord and the devil come by and he'll bring up all them thoughts of what you used to do and what you used to be and failures you've had in your past and places you've messed up and the devil will come by and he'll point at them and he'll say, hey, look at that, you old dirty thing. Look at that, you old dirty wretch. Look at that, you old dirty mind. But I'm glad tonight I do not stand before the Lord in my own rotten righteousness. I don't stand before... I don't have to be ashamed. Why? Because I'm not covered in my own righteousness. Uh, come here, son. Old Joshua gets before the Lord. Satan's a poking at him and saying, hey, look how nasty. Look how dirty. Look how filthy. But the Lord says, uh-uh. I don't see it that way. Get rid of them old nasty garments. Here. I'm going to give you mine. You got mine. Now when I look at him, he ain't got, he ain't got them old dirty garments. Uh, he's got my garment. He's got got my righteousness. He's got my holiness. And he's covered in what I have given. You don't have to be ashamed when the devil starts accusing you. You tell him I've been covered in the rich, red, royal, redeeming blood of the Lamb of God tonight. <laughs> Once I wondered in sin's black night, there was no way I could make my wrongs right. 
Then the old accuser to the Lord did cry. He is a sinner, and now he must die. But the one I'm standing before said this. Then I heard a voice say, Father, I'll go. be ashamed when Satan resists me. Brother Mike, the devil comes by and he reminds you all them things you used to do, what you used to be. You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to hold your head down and say, oh God, oh no. You can hold your head up high and say, that's what I was. Yeah. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 6, and such were some of you, but you're washed, but you're sanctified, but you're justified. I ain't what I am no more. And I'm just saying tonight, mark this down. Resistance is coming. Yea, resistance is here. I, I, I wish I could take it away from some of you, but I'm telling you, it wouldn't do you no good in your Christian life if we could. And I know some of you battling it. And, and, and just to even get here tonight, ain't no doubt, ain't no doubt. Some of y'all even just to get here this morning and tonight, it was an absolute slugfest from the devil. He just absolutely stood in your way, tried to throw excuse after excuse. Hey, just stay home. Hey, don't come back tonight. Hey, just lay around. Hey, it's Sunday afternoon. Hey, you got to go to work tomorrow. What in the world? You Man, just, just, just chill. He threw every resistance out he could this afternoon. And some people listen to it. Totally ignorant of it's that totally ignorant of the fact this thought that I just had, Brother Glenn, that wasn't me, that was the devil. Instead they thought, well, that's me thinking, no one. You're gonna get resisted tomorrow on your job. You're gonna get resisted this week in your home. It's coming. Make your mind up. When resistance comes, I've got an answer, and it ain't mine. I'm not afraid. I got somebody with me. Help me, Esther. I am not ashamed. I have been covered in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And I am going to walk on. I am not going to be a statistic. I ain't fixing to ring a bell and set my helmet down and walk off the battlefield and sit on the sideline and watch others fight this fight of faith. I will keep on regardless of the resistance. How about it tonight? Satan resisting you? What about just asking for some help? Lord, I can't do this. You got to help me. Let's all stand tonight, Father. You allow resistance in our life on purpose. It makes us profitable Christians. It makes us more powerful Christians. It gives us something in our soul we can't get any other way. So I'm not asking for you to take the resistance away from our lives. What I'm asking tonight is that you would strengthen us and help us to fight the good fight of faith. You told us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We can't stand here in the power of our own might. We need the power of your might. Help us. Give us grit, determination, strength, faith, hope, love, charity. Give us the fruits of the Spirit so we might be able to stand against the temptation even in our own flesh when Satan resists us. In Jesus' name, if you need to come tonight, you come.